Have you called them, Grace? Yes, Mr. Brettles. Brettles. Call them again, Grace. Yes, Mr. Brettles. Is the potage hot, Grace? It should be. I bubbled it well up. Good. Very good. We don't want to repeat a January 1st, 1936, do we? Not after our New Year resolutions. No, Mr. Brittles. Brittles. One-nighters, Mr. Tucker. One-nighters. The flotsam of the road, of the highway. Two more regulars and we'll have a very happy family. Try the porridge, Mr. Tucker. Good or not, that's the stuff. I shall not wait, gentlemen, I shall serve. Him that comes late and gets it cold shall have the eating of it cold. Due to the delay, gentlemen, I shall give you the news for the day after we have all our grace. <laughs> for these and all thy mercies, may the Lord make us truly thankful. Amen. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troublous life. Till the shades lengthen, the evening comes. The busy well is hushed, the fever of life is over. And our work done. Oh, bloody work. <laughs> then, Lord, in thy mercy, give us a safe lodging and a quiet rest and peace at last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Before I read the news for the day, gentlemen, I should like to say a word to those who are passing through, who will, shortly as it were, have gone on. Should you pass this way again, gentlemen, I would ask you to remember that the bed, in common with the tools of any other trade, is a piece of capital equipment. A tool used for 24 hours a day, gentlemen, costs less than a tool used for only 12 hours a day. Consequently, the product of its labours costs less. Our beds are no exception to this rule. Indeed, there are times when I regard myself, as it were, as the owner of a sleep factory. The miserable sum which I am able to charge you in return for sleep is due to the fact that our beds, our tools, are used 24 hours a day. Consequently, breakfast is at 7 o'clock prompt, in order that the night shift can occupy the beds vacated by you. In such way shall we all benefit and be provided at a ridiculously small charge with what I like to feel is a home from home. The news for the day. Headlines. Fewest unemployed for six years. Means test as lusting for unemployed. Hostility passing. Friendliness of new board. In the report of the Unemployment Assistance Board, the general conclusion, as expressed by Lord Rushcliffe, the chairman, is that the object of placing unemployment insurance on a sound and lasting basis has been completely attained. He said out last night about being off from school. It's teacher's rest. Teacher's rest and mother's best. Is it um, today you said your granddad Toby's taking you out? If I go. Well, why shouldn't you go? He's mean, is my granddad Toby. Mean? He's mean. Hmm, he doesn't spoil you enough, I suppose. I didn't mean he was mean with me. He's just mean. Hmm. Uh. Bit like you then, eh? I'm not mean. You're mean when it comes to taking your little brother out in his pram, aren't you? He's not my brother. Of course he's your brother. He's my half brother. And you're his half brother. And what do two halves make, eh? They make a whole. 
He likes you, you know. He's only a babby. I knew you're a babby too sometimes, I know. Me pigeons like me, me granddad killed him and ate him. Well, not all of them. They'll breed again. Then he'll eat him again. I'm not breeding pigeons for me granddad to eat. Uncle George wouldn't have eaten me pigeons. If he was starving, he would have had to, wouldn't he? Now, come on. Take this round to your grounds and tell her it's that as I order. There's a good lad. Finish that new book I gave you? No. Straight question, straight answer. Comics. That's all he reads nowadays. American trash sold second hand on cash market. Can hardly read the words for the muck. They've changed hands that many times. I'm reading myself. What bit of time I've got for a read? Can't say I've any great liking for them. But I read them if they're there. And there's no tilts. There's a library up the road. Well, I get from there too. Ethel M. Dell, among others. And what's wrong with her? You don't really want me to tell you, do you? It would only be your point of view if you did. I'll read what suits me. If you've got any better ideas, then let's have them and I'll read them. And if I don't like them, I'll tell you. One man's meat is another man's poison, they say. Who's setting young Sam against his granddad Toby? Master, is it? Not to my knowledge. But likely. Doesn't like their influence on him, you know that. He's jealous of the brass, you mean. You belittle him too much, Ethel. Oh, I don't have the mind to appreciate such as Master, is that it? Like I don't have the mind for good books or uh, politics that put folks out of work. If it would have closed regardless of anything Dad said, shouldn't blame Dad for George having to go away. He'll not waste his money on stamps for letters to me. Not if he's any sense, he won't. You miss him, don't you? I've no time on my hands for not having to clear up after him. He's only gone to prove himself to me, you know. Yes, I know. Not your dad that sent him off, it were me. What I said. About him doing that. I think to lose face if he comes back empty handed. I've closed the door on him, that's what I've done. I've closed the door. What's your present address then? Well, uh, I'm not sure, sir. I could take you there. Take me there? You must know what road it's on, at the least. Welbeck Road, or the one next to it. We don't know the town, I know. Uh, Bertle's place, are you? That's it, Mr. Bertle, sir. Ah, well, you'll be all right there if you behave yourself. He's a Christian gentleman. Do you keep your cap on in the house? No, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Well, I might have something for you. You're used to shoveling coal, of course, but what sort of condition are you in? Most of the chaps who come in here have let themselves go. Given up. Gone slack. Slackers. I have kept in condition, sir. I could manage it. Well, there were a couple of vacancies at a local foundry this morning. Wait over there, will you? He putting you through it, has he? A bit. I don't know what I told you. I must have chucked about 60 lies at him. Who oh, would like that? I know what I'd like to bloody chuck at him. Still, he says he might have something for me. Where? Foundry, shoveling coal. I know it. Next to fettling machines. Your ears off off if you don't get gas first. The best thing you can do is to go back home. I shall not be going home. I'm run for missus. She died last year having a bairn. Here. Have a fight. No, take no, it. I'll give you no. Sir. I'd give up breathing if I could. It's funny, isn't it, though? How you can't just give up breathing. Osborne. That's me, sir. You local? Yes. How long have you been here? 
Four years. Live in? Live downstairs with me mother. She cooks. You'll not see her, though. She never comes up. She's got his measure. She used to be a daily for his mother. This is his own place, is it? He lived here with his mother. When she died, he started it as a place for gentlemen. Gentlemen? Never got any, though, except old Mr. Travis that died last year. It was commercials at first, and they stopped coming. Used to take what he can get these days. Does he read news every morning? Ah, uh, reckons on as it saves us buying a paper. But it's him like sound of his own voice. He only reads what he wants, mind. What he thinks we should hear. Puts his own bits in and all. Ah, I mean, it's all bloody lies, any road. Time he's been at it, you can't tell one lie from another. Been here long? Yeah, he did all but. Left home about this time last year to look for work. <laughs> A bloody sausage. The time I got here, I was right down. So I stopped a bit, then a bit longer. Now you're getting a rut. <laughs> Guess like home. Home? Yeah, uh, was that bloody homesick first month I left. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you come to a place, you stop a bit. You get to know chaps. There's somebody to come back and talk to. You'd have been as well off at home, wouldn't you? Yeah, keep telling yourself you'll move on. But... You know, there's no work back home. Long you stay away, Hardly gets to go back. Especially when you've not but what you set out, we? I'd go home if I was you. I can't now. Wife died while I was away. I should have been dead a fortnight when I heard. When I got back to our house, there was somebody else living there. My mother had sold the furniture to pay for the funeral. So she railed on at me, it's all my fault. Felt like signing on at the cemetery. You moving on? I'm waiting for my mate. He's gone to labour. I'm only uh, fit for light work. I have a chest. It lessens your chances. Yeah, it's mainly agricultural around here, apart from Appleby's foundry. I had a good home though when I was working. Took some getting together did that furniture. <laughs> I would have a scrap now and then, but everybody does, don't they? <laughs> like looking back on a good summer, thinking on it. Aye. Like a good summer. I should go back, I think. Back home? Aye, I, I think I should go back. I don't dawdle. Make <coughs> your mind up and go. The longer you wait, harder it gets. I should be scubbed if we get them jobs, though. I'm, I shall have to take it, shan't I? Mr. Tucker. Mr. George Barraclough, I am. Lovely, delicate touch, Mr. Tucker. A woman's touch. Still here, Mr. Barraclough? I'm waiting for me, mate. It's not strictly allowed, you know. Not strictly allowed. Premises should be vacated shortly after breakfast, Mr. Barraclough. Facilities over and above are intended for regular <coughs> by Mr. Tucker here. <coughs> Delicate, yes. My mother was a very coarse darling. Very coarse. Shall I wait outside then? You just passed window just now, your mate. Oh, well, uh, we'll, um, we'll be on our way then. <laughs> Gentlemen of the road. Knights of the Highway. Ready for off, then? There's a chance of a job happen. Both on us? Happen? What doing, then? I'll, uh, I'll tell you later. We have to go back there again after dinner. Well, I were, um, I were thinking of going home. Empty-handed? 
Hundred and more mile for now. Well, I may have got now, but I've learnt some it. There's now to Gypsy and me. It's work. We have to check it where we can find it. It's too long a road back there when out in your pocket. Did he say what time he were coming? Did who say? Toby. They're taking Sam to Garforth in the car, aren't they? Today? Well, today's half closing. He'd not be gadding off if there were a chance of a bit of profit to be made, wouldn't Toby, would he? I had him in mind it were tomorrow. Where's Sam? He's outside, up to his eyeballs in Slutch. Call him for me. Nay, hey, I'd best call him the Sen. He'd soon have naught to do with me since I throttled his pigeons. I thought you'd made it up with him. I'm trying, but if he cheeks me and have to leather him, I shall be back with a started, shan't I? Sam! Polly? Polly? Where's Polly? She's gone out to call young Sam. Ah, oh, well, tell her there's half a rabbit there from Chopper. Nothing to pay. Come to that, have we begging rabbits off Chopper? If you don't like where it comes from, Master, you don't have to eat it. You will do, though, won't you? You're as much at the mercy of your belly as the rest of us. Oh, with George, we're no mate at Chopper's. Owed you a favour, did he? He owed me a favour, yes. I helped lay out his mother last Sunday. He ran off when I called him. He's never done that before. Did you tell him what you called him for? Oh, to be ready for his granddad Toby, I said. Well, he doesn't want to go, his granddad Toby, does he? He had the time of his life with him when he went last. It just been awkward. Happen he doesn't think it's worth the coming back. Coming back here? Well, the coming back here, to us. To this bloody muck midden. Jack! Nay, leave me be, I've moved on. It's not your fault you can't do for him what they can. There was no talk to do for our Dora neither, was there? Was that not my fault? And what have I not done for thee? Whose fault lies there? I've not for anybody's good, isn't that my fault? It had been a different story if I'd done what Toby did for himself and married well. Nay, nay, I said that badly. That weren't what I meant. What I meant was that Toby got through marriage what other folk have to work for when they're allowed. Why should that put him above me, Polly? For it does, you know. When work's been there, have I not worked and mucky work at that? Aye, you've worked. And is it right that it should be so, that I should seem less than him? No. It's how things are, that's all. And is that what he's to learn, then, the lad? That he can get through Toby, what Toby got without work. Is that to be his lesson in life, inheritance? I've mended it best I can. Uh, I've had to shorten the cord, so I'm not over this far. Oh, thanks. You're not going to get that boot red for me, are you? I'd like to know what you thought of it. If the lads would like it at school. I read it when I read these. These are school books. School books? They're about boarding school. Besson being killed. Then I get at this school. He's got a car and a chauffeur, this person be. He's a hon. A hon, is he? What's a hon? It's a title. Like sir. It's a boarding school. My granddad said I can go to a boarding school. What's he talking about? No, I said it because he'd eaten me pigeon. He didn't mean it. He said it because I said I was sick of living here. After he'd eaten me pigeon. Don't you think it's time you forgot and forgave him for that pigeon? People do eat pigeons, you know. He didn't ask me, did he? Well, sometimes you shouldn't have to ask. He did it because he didn't want to go begging from anybody. He thought you'd understand. He didn't. Yes, he did. Would you like to beg your food from other people? My granddad wouldn't anyway. Wouldn't beg me, granddad. You mean he'd starve first? Aye, he would. Aye, he wouldn't let you starve, though, would he? Well, would he? No. No. And that's the way of it, you see. He's got a whale. <laughs> There's three. Oh. Come on.
What's the reading there? Uh, about Germany. Concentration camps. What sort of camps? It's been said they're like the labour camps we have over here. And how are they? It's to be up now. Machine guns, barbed wire. A place called Dachau this chap went to. Went round it with Stryker, the Jew baiter. Says he came away to, ready to believe all the stories of beatings up and killings. They won't let anybody out of the place till they've signed a form saying they'll not tell what goes on there. Seems a big price to pay for getting the trains to run on time. What trains? Hitler's. What bugger? Ah. Him is going to get us back in work. Ah, same chap that's banned trade unions. He's vanished altogether now. Sam? No sign of him out there. He was round at Ethel's half an hour back. Am I allowed to ask him then? If he wants to go with Toby? If he did, he'd have come when you called him before, wouldn't he? Am I allowed to ask him? Aye, if you don't believe me. It's not a question of that. If he wants, he can go and welcome. He was uh, reading the comic you'd given him. Why? It'll be one of them comics that saw give me for him. Did you read them? Comics? At my age. A story about a chap called the Hon David Bassenby, a prefect of St Michael's. Has a car with a chauffeur who stops in the village. They get up to all sorts of spiffing pranks. Beat the, beat the fags up, flutters on the GGs, rags in the dawn. Right up your street, I'd have thought. If you wanted to make a point, get it made. He said you told him he could go to a school like that. I meant a board school. That you told me about. That that you said he'd go to. And I got it from Watkins. Meaning what? That we don't know much about it. We shall know a lot more tonight. I went to see Reverend at Top Church for the week. He said that if I called on him tonight, he'd have to have some news for me. News? As to whether we're likely to get him in. It's a charity school, Dad. Oh, I know that. It won't be like the comics. He'd settle to it once he were there. And if he didn't? He's got three chances. Either he stops as he is. If he does, it's pit for him a note. Or we hand him over to Toby and his missus, or he tries his look at this place. Has he... Have you got anything better up your sleeve? If he stops here, I can keep on trying with him. Change the system, will you? You say he's got brains, but he won't use them. Not ready to use them, perhaps. He'll wish he'd been ready to use them when he gets down yon pit. What do you need brains down there, then? Egging me on, are you? It's not just what he does, is it? It's what he gets out of it. You get no way out work. I know that if you don't. You're too bloody contented. That's your trouble. You'd have been gone from here else. Suppose I am contented. Suppose. What more should I ask? And you get no for asking. You work. You work and you take. And if you've got brains, you use them to advantage. Why won't he? I don't know what goes on in his mind. First his dad going off, then our Dora. I couldn't understand it affecting him. Choose what I say to him. You think I can't? If he stirs himself and gets cracking later on, will they give him a scholarship? It's too late for that, I've told you. Aye, you told me and I thought I... And I can see no other way out. There's worse ways than letting Toby out. And what lesson is the lad to draw from him? That he did what was best for him. I don't happen to see it as best, though, do I? He says he doesn't want to go to Garforth with his granddad. Is that right, lad? I don't want to go. Then go thou won't. likes you to wait. You are. Well, before you sit down, he uh, likes us to wait for him. <laughs> I'm hungry. You'll still be bloody hungry when you've ate it and all, so you might as well wait. Don't get under my feet, Mr Tucker. I'm all behind. Can't we give you a lift, love? You what? He, he don't like it. No, he said you wouldn't do it at home, so why should you help here? Hey, uh, did you help at home? No. Did you? No. Oh, he's right. I didn't. Sat at the table when I liked at home. I know. Just sat there and it come to me. Aye. I left in a huff, the nose. Oh. 
She said she was sick of the sight of me sitting round doing out. Ah, I said, but you'll be sorry when I've gone. Sorry you'll be when I've gone. But it's I'm the one who's sorry. I got that job, the news. Oh, huh. Stoker at Foundry. Alan's fixing up for us to stop here now. She'll only stop for a week or two, just get some brass in my pocket. Oh, well, they all say that. I mean it. Well, we all do. Well, it never comes about. I paid him for tonight. He'd not take for a week. Oh, you know, well, he never does, not at first. Just uh, nightly at first. So he can kick us out if his faces don't fit. Oh, well, uh, something like that, yeah. He can't do that. What? He doesn't like it when you sit before he does. He doesn't like what? He, he doesn't like it when you sit at table before he well, comes. He can lump it then, can't he? He chuck us out. Who's bloody paying? You know, there's uh, only two other places round here, and one's half a dollar, the other's three bob. Oh, so that's what it takes less for, is it? For the pleasure of playing Hitler? Happen. That's what you think? Happen. Not because it's thick with muck and the grub's not fit to feed pigs on. But we've no option. I could leave. It's only your back when he saw brass floating off. Uh, well, well, some have from time to time, but there's always been some that take their place. Tribs and drabs. Have you never stood together? You're working men, aren't you? Yeah, well, we was once on a day. Have you got somewhere to go back to? Oh, we have. What's that got to do with it? Well, I've not. And neither are most of these. Look, we're settled here. We're, we're used to it. And we've seen worse. Well, if he sinks, so do we. Did you see Toby? You were waiting at top of the street, like you said. Was she with him? He said he'd go back and fetch you. What'd you tell him? Uh, I said Sam had a cold. I thought you might wrap it up. He said he'd call again next week. Wanted to keep the door open, did you? No harm in that. No, no harm in that. If it came that we couldn't manage no more... We can manage we are, Toby. It's somewhere he'd be cared for. You keep on bringing it up, don't you? I don't want him left on his own in the world. It's a cold place without somebody cares for you. You can care too much. You're thinking of Dora, aren't you? You. You always knew. You knew, but you really said. You're not an easy man to argue with, Jack. And I love to see you warm with her and the pleasure it gave you just looking at her when she were a bairn. No, Polly. Hurts, does it? She'll not leave me. It comes into my mind sometimes. The thought. The picture of her in my mind. <sighs> Empty, I feel, Polly. That empty, I wish it were life that would drain out on me. It'll pass. To the stage where it's bearable, any road. You can care too much. I know it now. I know that now. I know it's too late. Do we a bit of weight off? Where's it come from? Idleness. Nay, they were like that when they were working. Sure up about me weight. It's one thing. You have a few weeks fat to live off there. <laughs> I'll not perish over neat. Ooh. <coughs> What's up? My leg. What's up, weight? Bit sharp when I bend my knee. You like it long? Nay, just now, that's all. It'll pass. It had better. Eh? Oh, I. Nay, it'll, it'll be ripe in the morning. It's passing off now. I bet it saves him some of that. Uh, Sweet lamp. 
corporation light. Charges for that if he could. It takes less than two others, so they say. Aye, and he gives less for it. There'll be a bed be now. Hey. At home. Did sleep last night. Aye, I slept. I didn't. Did a bit of thinking. Oh, I do a fair lot of thinking. You go in for it much? Not much. Keeps the mind lively, does thinking. No wonder I couldn't bloody sleep. There's such a lot to think about. The more you think, the more there is to think about. There's no end to it. It's a big bed to be in on your own, is that of ours? When were you ever in it on your own? I never was. But we're never out of it either. Except that night that uh, our door and Sam come up. Well, she'll miss me in bed any road. Will it though? She'll miss you, never fear. Yeah. Aye. And when they tells her that's got to work, she'll think that's an hero. Happen. Of course she will. What's the use of that though? Eh? What's the good of being a hero when you're not there to enjoy it? Be worse off at your Auntie May's with your Les. Your balls all night. There's a bed over my grand at Toby's shop that I wouldn't live there. Not let us have it though. Yeah. It's mean. What is all this mean business? Who, who says he's mean? He is. My dad would have come back if my grand at Toby'd have paid his fare. Who told you that? Grandad Barclough, he told me. I see. And you believed him, I suppose. Doesn't tell lies, me grandad Barclough. Grown-ups don't tell lies. Do they? No. Well, no. But they make mistakes. How do you know he didn't make a mistake? Didn't make a mistake. Wanted me to know about it. Like with me pigeons. Night, night. Shift are waiting for their beds. Come on, we've work to go to. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, what's up? My knee. I can't bend it. It's worse than last night. I'll give you a lift. Take hold of my hand. Uh, leave, leave, it, leave it be. What's up? He can't bend his knee. What about? It only bends in one bloody place. Still digged. Try it again. You're not pulling me out. On the on then. Go on, take hold of me. I again. can't. I can't move. I'm stuck. I'm a fixture. You can't afford to be a fixture. Now pull this end together and get up out I of here. Honest, honest, I can't. Um, um, bro. Bless my 
Uncle George. George? You know where George is. He's gone looking for work. I mean, where's he gone? Oh, well, I mean, we don't know, do we? Not till he writes to us. What if he doesn't? Oh, he'll write when he gets work. If he doesn't get work? He'll get work. There's more to your Uncle George than he's given credit for, you know. What if he doesn't get work, though? I've told you, he will. He might not. Ooh, you're a right little Jeremiah, aren't you? Who's Jeremiah? He was a prophet. He said, thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Who did? He did. Jeremiah did. Hundreds of years ago. How do you know? Because me mam used to read him to us from the Bible every Sunday, hoping me dad had over here. He was a favourite prophet. If there's no work, he'll come back, won't he? No. Not till he's got work, he won't. There's not much work, is there? No. There's a shortage of work, for sure. Why? Of oh, course there is. That's why. It's the owners. Eh? That's what my granddad says. He says it's the owners. He says they take coal where it's easy and leave rest, and when it stops being easy, they close it down and spend the money on something else. He says... He that... says a lot of things, your granddad. And it's not all gospel, you know. I'm washing today, if you've got out. Oh, yes. I've got some nappies in the scullery, if you're boiling. I'll go talk to her. Oh, that's right. You go and talk to your cousin Pat. She likes me to talk to her. She does, as a matter of fact. Does what? Oh, Pat. Like him to talk to her. Now, you listen. <laughs> oh, well, she'd show as much interest in his baby brother. He's like Jack. He looks at him as if he were made of jelly. Oh, well, there's some excuse for it, lad. Happened he's had his mind poisoned in that direction as well. Poisoned by who? Give you three guesses. Why? Why should Jack do that? Why did he have to tell the lad that Toby refused his daddy's fare to come home? There's no wonder he wouldn't go out with him yesterday. Who says Jack told him that? Sam does. He told me last night. Well, it's right what he said. Toby did refuse to pay Harry's fare. Yeah, but did he have to tell him? And like that? Toby's got money on his side. What's Jack got? Except a fight as he can. But fight what, Polly? What's the battle? What's at stake? If he can't walk, he can't get up, can he? There's a man waiting for that bed. Well, then you'd better go and heal my mate, hadn't you? I beg your pardon. You'll manage to feed this lot on a loaf and five fishes. Now's your chance to make the lame walk. That's blasphemy, Mr. Dakin. You're the blasphemy, mate. I saw a cold pottage on God's waistcoat. That's what you are. A malingerer he is. A what? They cure at labour exchange for dole. Come people in time with his work, they cure doctors for a note. Working at the whole shift, mate. She's badly. She'll have to get out of here. Look, there's only three night shift. There's three empty beds next door. You stop as you are. I'm holding him back. My mate. I've been holding him back ever since we left home. He'd have got more lifts if there'd not been two of us. He did best part away on Shanks's pony because of me. You must go and get your porridge. I forfeited mine. Right. Is he carrying on about me? Gaffer? He's said his bit. How is it? Bit looser, that. Not loose enough for you to work, though. No, no, I... You think I'm playing old soldier, don't you? He does. Well, he's bloody wrong. It's hard luck about that job. I shall have to get off. Then I'll be a non-starter myself. Ah. We shall have to leave here now. I'll see the when I get back. Alan. Take care of this, then. Aye. What's that you're reading? Uh, something of Dad's. What he came back with last night? It's about that school we talked on. 
Charity school? Ah, charity school. Where did he get that from? The vicar of North Skeleton sent for it. He's a subscriber. It's the rules and so on. I see. So that's what he's been up to. Thinks he'll get out of it that way, does he? Out of what, ma'am? Doing what Toby should be let do. Provide for Sam. He's never tried to get out providing for him. Thinks this could be better for him, that's all. Tad's up to the same thing. He'd turn to anybody but Toby. It's been an obsession with him ever since our Dora died. It's you that provides for us all, anyway. It's another pin that pricks him. Another thing he'd like off his mind. He's just trying to do what he thinks is best as he sees it. Is it what you think is best, as you see it? Best of a bad job, I think. That even? I don't know. It's maybe a gamble. Has he asked you what you think? No, not straight out. Nor is he likely to. He'll go his own road, as always. He'll send him off without my blessing. As much against it as that. And more. He might get a better chance there. His education, I mean. You think he will? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. There's no future for him at our place, I know that. Doesn't it tell you in there? There's things in these rules I don't like. Such as what? Well... The guardians of the child shall resign to the committee the control and management of the child, together with authority to place the child out to trade or service. And guardians shall be allowed to visit children only if they come clean in person and dress, conduct themselves in an orderly manner, and do not, under any circumstances, give the children any kind of eatables. It's institution language. Corridors and the stink of stale vegetables. And you don't get out of school at the end of the day. You're in it all the time. Education isn't everything. Well, there are other things to be considered. Ah, that's true. She'd turn in her grave if she thought he had to go down the pit, though. Well, that's what Dad's thinking. He cares, ma'am. Aye, and that covers a multitude of sins. He could only see his dad in Sam at one time. Now our Dora's dead, he can see only her. He could smother him with caring. Then up and Sam would be best away. It's all been a way for him up to now. His dad gone, and Dora, and moving from one house to another. To be settled is what he needs now. He needs his roots, Frank. Your leg. It was bad when I started out. Here I get to home, better it seems. Still not so clever though. Come on. If you're hungry, Come on. you've got to eat. To eat to live. Come on. Come on. That's what pigeons is for, as well as for keeping.
Grandad. Hey, what is it now, then? Are you hungry, Grandad? Aye, well, seeing as I haven't had my dinner, I suppose I am. Have we got out for dinner? Your grand will find us something never for you. I've brought some. You've what? I've brought some. One of yours? Aye. It's died, has it? I killed it so we could eat it. Give it here. Can my grand cook it? Aye, she'll cook it. Will he give it to her? Aye, I'll give it to her. Hey, we do us best for you, you know that, don't you? Yes, Grandad. He brought us this for us dinners. Sam? He killed it himself. He's learning. What's he learning, Jack? That it's a hard, bloody world. Dad, let Toby have him. Aye, let Toby have him. Let him be swaddled and coddled and let him be led to believe there'll always be somebody to pick him up when he falls. It's that sort of world you want, isn't it? I've always taken it as such from what you've said. What you want and what you're likely to get are two different things, aren't they? You've come to believe that, have you? Them's the facts I face. I've never faced no other. Except you face up to them. How can you fight? Let him learn that. Let him learn what it feels like to fall. And let him be educated in process, aye. And let him use his education to shape some sense out of life. And not be content with his lot in it like some are. Like me, you mean? If Cap Pitts bloody wear it. That's fine talk, that is. You keep out of this, Polly. She's got a right to say what she thinks, same as anybody else, Dad. A man's world, it might be for what value it is, but she's got to live in it as well. Aye, the woman's vote. That's what puts your bloody Baldwins in. And you McDonald's, who put them in? You for one. And you for another. Oh, the best of a bad bunch. That's the choice we get. Cap in hand. There's the picture of a generation of working men for you. Cap in hand. Eyes on floor in front of Toby and his ilk. In front of your own. You would when go they're taken from you and given a you? colour and tie. Everybody. You against everybody. Aye, if need be. Nobody knows best but you. No way out but yours. Tell me you're better and I'll listen. You've poisoned that lad against Toby already. Who told you that? Never mind who told me. Sufficient that I know. What's he to do if this other door's closed against him? Choose whether I think it's right or not. It'll not be closed against him. You can't be sure of that. I've been told it'll not. Form's gone in. I've been told there'll be a place for him. Aunt Ethel, what's putting straw on ground for Aunt Ethel? Oh, Doc has got concussion at pits. It's to stop noise of carts and such. So don't you go shouting round there.